afternoon everybody my name is vikas gupta and i am and i represent eash automotive private limited i am the founder ceo and cfo of eash automotive private limited before i start my presentation which is all about as to what we have been doing in the electric vehicle segment and how we are doing it differently i would uh, like to state some data points franchise has always been a mode for selling the product right but we have eash is the only company in the country which has bought in to the manufacturing into the franchise mode so currently we have 26 operational unit which are making the electric vehicles both in two wheeler and three wheeler category and then there are 28 more entities which are about to uh, about to start uh, within next 2 to 3 months so we have bought the new dimension of of having an assembly line or a manufacturing unit in the franchise mode eash is the only company which has crossed the mark of i am talking about electric vehicle segment i am not talking about any other segment so in the electric vehicle segment eash is the only company which has first crossed the mark of 500 dealers and distributors in the month of december 2021 and now in the month of july 2022 we have crossed the mark of 1000 dealers and distributors across 28 states our presence is in 28 states and we have assembly unit wherein we are manufacturing the product at 20 at 16 states so this was some some data points now i coming to the agenda of this presentation so i'm going to cover the right business plan for the brand what is the way to sustain in the business what are the various opportunities through the through the franchise which are available selecting the right franchise and some other aspects which are required for the franchising business so what is business plan so in my view business plan is nothing but the right solution to the problem which either the industry is facing or a particular business is facing so when we started eash automotive we first of all analyzed what are those problem areas which we could target and provide a solution to that and if we are able to provide a solution for those problem areas success is going to achieve to us by all means so there are certain peculiar issues of the ev industry the first peculiar issue is there is no design advantage there are over 800 plus ev players which are prevailing in the market and there are only 24 unique type of models which are available in the market so nobody can claim that i have a unique design of a vehicle because there is no design registration which is which is applicable in this industry so the first problem is there is no design advantage second problem is there is no technology advantage currently in the two wheeler segment and earlier even in the three wheeler segment entire of the product is being imported from outside the country and the only activity that is happening here in the country is assembling of the product so there is no technology advantage the same technology which ola vehicle is using eashwa is also using the same technology and there is no advantage which goes to any of the any of the ev players again there is no feature advantage so we can't say that the feature which we are providing is a very unique feature because from the same destination we are importing as well as the other 800 plus players are importing and hence there is no feature advantage there is huge competition as i mentioned there are 800 plus players now with the presence of 800 players you can assume what level of competition any of the oem is facing <coughs> so that's the other uh, peculiar issue of the ev industry now the other peculiar issue of the ev industry is that industry is actually a new industry there is lot of lack of awareness among the people who are who are suspicious about whether this industry will will flourish or not 
who have lots of doubts about the technology, who have lots of doubts about the the ability of the battery to take them for a for a longer ride or to have a longer life span of the battery. The other problem, which is which is more uh, more of the government related uh, problem, which is the inverted tax structure. This EV industry attracts a GST of 5% rate on the output, whereas most of the input items attract at 28% or at 18%. So a lot of money get blocked in the in the duty which which one has to claim in the form of refund. The last but not the least is there is no incentive to the manufacturer. So with that, what I mean is that there are lots of incentives which government is giving, but all those incentives are available to the end user. Whereas the manufacturer has to pass on those incentives. Now in order to pass on those in incentives, so if I take example of say fame to subsidy. So there is huge subsidy which, which government is is providing on the purchase of high speed electric two wheeler and electric three wheelers and in order for the end customer to claim it there are only two ways one manufacturer simply provide the vehicle without the subsidy and the end user claims it from the government which the end user is not interested in the other way is that manufacturer passes it on and after completing a lot of paperwork manufacturer gets that claim in over three to four months kind of time frame. So that's a big, big issue because the cash flow get stuck. So cash flow get stuck in the inverted tax structure, cash flow get stuck in the in the incentive which is which is passed on by the manufacturer to the to the end user. So so when we started this business we thought we will have to provide a solution to all these problems. Now the solution that we were able to identify is that the end user of this particular product is interested only in an cost effective product. They are not concerned with the environment, they are not concerned with, with any other factor because there is no design advantage, there is no technology advantage, there is no such advantage. So in order to keep the cost at the minimum level, we decided that we will set up assembly line at every 200 km because last mile logistic is the only area wherein there is a scope of optimization of cost. So if you would have seen the, the pricing that was released by Ola Electric at the initial stage, since they are based, they are gonna be based in Tamil Nadu, so for the four southern states, they fixed a pricing of 79999 for the basic model and rest of the country they they priced the same product at 99999 now why was there a difference of 20000 rupees in the pricing as compared to those four states because of nothing but the last mile logistics so if you are able to control that cost of last mile logistics, you can provide the same product at the same pricing at any part of the country. So that is the, the only area wherein one could add value in the EV segment as of now. I am not saying it is going to be a perpetual phenomena, but yes, as of now, that is the only area wherein one could add some value in the EV segment. And that is the area which we targeted and we set up assembly line at every 200 km at various parts of the country and this assembly line is set up in joint venture on a franchise model with somebody who is interested in setting up a unit with us. <clears throat> so with that we are able to bring down the, the pricing of the vehicle at the same level irrespective of whether it is in Gujarat or in northeastern states or irrespective of whether it is in Kanyakumari or in Jammu and Kashmir. By the way, we have presence in all the, all the parts of the country and we have not only have the dealers and the distributors in all parts of the country, we also have the assembly line at various parts of the country. So, going to the next item, what are the factors on which one could penetrate the EV industry? So as I mentioned, cost competitiveness is the only factor because the 
end user is not buying this product because it is very stylish, because it is very technology driven product, but because it pinches when they get the fuel tank filled with 100 rupees a litre fuel and it gives them a mileage of only 35-40 kilometres at a, at a cost of rupees 100. Now with the electric vehicle, they can get the same rather better mileage on just 15 paisa per kilometer, whereas this comes to somewhere around three and a half to four rupees per kilometer. So that's the huge difference and the, the end customer is appreciating only this aspect. So if, if a manufacturer in the EV segment is able to provide cost effective vehicle, with the, with the same features at, as others are providing, I think uh, the, the industry's, industry as well as the player is gonna uh, survive and, and flourish. The other, other factor which is, which is very important to this industry is that, the, that this is, so there is a festival period which starts uh, with the beginning of September and ends until 25th of December or maybe 31st of December and then rest, rest entire year is, is equivalent. What I mean is that for the, for the three months which are festival months, the sale is exactly equivalent to the sale which for the nine months one could get. Now what happens is that since the, the requirements suddenly surge a lot, so there is always a non-availability of material during the festival season and that's the period wherein you could earn, wherein you could flourish. So you will have to make sure that your planning is so good that you are able to provide the vehicle at the time when it is needed at most. So you will have to make the availability of the vehicle as per the demand of the market and since there is a dependency on the import, the, the the cycle of purchase and conversion of vehicle is about 60 days. So again, you will have to take, uh, make a balance between these factors. Now, visibility in the market is another factor. Like any other product, if there is no visibility of your product, then people will not buy it and people will go for the known brand of that particular industry. Again, robust service network is very important factor. So why Maruti is able to rule the industry of, uh, of uh, four-wheeler for so many years? So they have been ruling the industry for last 30 plus years. And the only reason for them ruling the industry is not because their product is very good, their design is very good, but because everybody is assured that they will get the desired service and the spares wherever they go in the country and even outside the country. So although this is a product industry, but it is dominated with the help of services, not with the help of product. Product, of course, you will have to provide a comparable product, but in case you want to take the lead, you will have to take the lead in the service providing and the spares management, not in the product management. So you will have to make the robust service network ready. Availability of spares and accessories, as I mentioned, is another important aspect with the help of which one could penetrate the industry. The next aspect which, which goes very well is the focus on the brand creation. So I, I tell you, when we started this industry about uh, four years back, we subscribed to India Mart for the leads that we were getting. So 10 out of the 10 leads were coming with the, with the other brand name. Now over, over about two and a half years past, with our penetration in the market, 7 out of the 10 leads are coming with the Yashwa brand. Which means we are able to, able to provide the visibility in the EV industry. But still, when a customer comes to our, when a normal customer comes to our showroom, Three out of the ten customers ask, which is this brand e Ashwa? Because that level of visibility we are not yet able to provide and that's the next target. We will have to, pro we will have to do a focus on the brand creation 
and once that brand creation is is done i think sale is not a problem in this industry availability ability to provide value add with no additional cost as i mentioned cost is very important factor in this industry so if we are able to provide some value add item at no additional cost i think customer gonna appreciate that and customer will definitely give value to that so so what was the strategy that we adopted so all those were problem statements and the and the factors which are required for penetrating the industry now the strategy that we adopted was creating the sale point without creating even the product range so until one year from now we were not having a single product in the two wheeler segment of our own brand so initially we focused on creating the dealer and the distributor network so when we created about 100 dealer and distributor with the with the multi brand product offering we got our first approval for four product and then thereafter we got approval for eight more product and that is how we came up with 12 products in the two wheeler two wheeler segment so the focus was initially to create the sale points then we created a large range of product once the sufficient sales points were were created it was it was uh, based on our strategy that we that we devised so we are the only company in the country which has a product range of 10 plus in both two wheeler and three wheeler segment separately so no other player in the company country is having more than 7 to 8 products approved by the government or the approving authorities but eashwa has 25 types of products which are approved in the uh, in both the two wheeler and the three wheeler category now the next strategy was to create feeding infrastructure for all sale points so once you have created the sale point you have created the product now where from you will feed that product to so we created the assembly line as i mentioned 26 assembly lines are already operational for eashwa and there are 28 assembly line which are in pipeline that will be created by the end of 31st october 2022 so we will have 52 52 assembly points through which we will be supplying to our dealer and distributor network which by that time would be in the range of about 1400 or 1500 plus dealer and distributor across all part of the country so now the next uh, strategy was was to create the visibility in the industry player as i mentioned earlier 10 out of the 10 leads used to come with with other brand name today 7 out of the 10 leads come with the with the eashwa brand name so that was the strategy number 4 wherein we create the visibility in the industry player so you you check with any any ev player eashwa is a name known to everybody and anybody now the next strategy was to create service and spare network for all ev players and not just for eashwa so we have created a <coughs> a sister concern called all ev serv now this all ev serv provide services spares maintenance for for any brand of electric vehicles two wheeler and three wheeler with that we were able to create a lot of visibility in the market because people who who are using a different brand of vehicle are coming to our showroom and when they are getting the desired spare and the component from our showroom or from our service network they are diverting their attention towards the ashwa brand now the next strategy is to create a brand known to anyone and everyone we are working on that uh, with with uh, with whatever means with which with whatever resources possible for us and that is going to be the new uh, uh, the next strategy on which we are working so coming to uh, to what are the factors which are important for the sustainability in the business now this segment since it is a low investment segment the investment starts with with about 3 and a half lakh rupees so there is high attrition ratio among the dealers and the distributors 
because there is nothing much at stake for them. So there is, as per the as per the available data, there is about 30% of the attrition ratio in the in the EV player. So so if you are able to to uh, to retain the, those dealers and distributors which you have made, I think the half of the battle is won. The huge competition, as I mentioned, 800 plus players are available in the in the segment. So huge competition makes dealers dispensable. They can move here and there because some of the other new player will start providing them them some incentive which EHY is not providing and it will attract them to move. Price and margin competition is another factor which is very important. You will have to keep your pricing well within the range at which the product is, is, is being sold by other brands because there is not much appreciation towards the brand in this particular segment. Now, arrangement of finance for the end user is another very important aspect here. Since most of the products that are being sold in the electric two-wheeler category are non-registration, non-license number uh, vehicle, so the availability of finance is a challenge because it cannot get hypothecated. The vehicle cannot get hypothecated and hence none of the banks are providing finance to, to the, for the purchase of electric two-wheeler and None of the banks are providing finance for the purchase of electric three-wheelers because there is huge, uh, huge default ratio in that particular segment. And hence, arrangement of finance for the end user is a very important aspect which is required for the sustainability of the business. Service support, as I mentioned earlier, also is, is very important aspect for, for, pro, for the sustainability of the business. In in case you are able to, to uh, win the battle on all these five fronts, I think growth is not a challenge. Growth is, is going to gonna achieve uh, by all means. But you will have to work on these five uh, aspects which are very important for the sustainability of the business. Now, coming to what are the various opportunities via fran franchising is available in the EV segment, particularly for ES Automotive and what are the criteria that is followed for selecting the right franchise. So franchise business has always been tagged with a large brand. So in, in my past, I have never seen franchise business developed, propagated by, by some brand which is very new to the market because there will not be any buyer for that franchise uh, uh, proposition. But with the EV segment, there are 800 players which are offering franchise business. So the, the phenomena has changed. <coughs> you need not be a, a very reputed brand in order to, to offer franchising. In the EV segment, uh, the, the franchising is being offered by, by even the very smallest of the players. Franchise industry as such is getting boosted with the, with the EV segment. There are 800 players in the OEM category and then there are about 50,000 plus franchises which are working with those 800 OEMs. <coughs> Never heard such a small investment in franchise business. As I mentioned, the franchise business in the EV segment starts at about 3.5 lakh rupees. So you would not have heard the franchise business at such a small investment. So this is another change that has been bought by the, by the EV industry in the franchise business. So earlier when we when we used to used to see a franchise outlet or a franchise uh, business, we used to see it in the metro cities only. Whereas with the EV segment, metro cities are not the hot destination. Tier two, three, and four cities are the hot destination. Eighty percent of e Ashwa franchise are in tier three and four segment and about 15% are in tier 2 cities and only 5% are in metro cities or in tier 1 cities. So that is another change that is bought by the, uh, by the electric vehicle in the franchise business. This segment is giving employment to a very large population. As I mentioned, 50,000 plus franchises are working. 
1000 plus are working with ESY itself and then there are so many players which are offering franchise. So employment is being generated by this particular segment in bulk. Allied industries are spurring like anything. So allied industries include the service, repair, maintenance, spares, and then the battery segment, then the charging segment, those are the allied industries to the EV segment. And those are flourishing like anything. So as I mentioned, there are 800 plus players in the EV segment and there are about at least 2000 plus which are there in the battery segment. And then there are about 1000 plus which are available in the charging segment and so on and so forth. <laughs> Attraction towards own business is increasing as compared to job. So there is, for over last two years, we have seen that very young people are attracted towards doing their own business rather than going for the job after completing their graduation or post-graduation. So this change in the phenomena is also a, a gift by the EV industry to the, to the, uh, to the country. <coughs> I'll take a pause here. I'm, I'm done with my presentation, but if somebody is having any question, I would be happy to answer that question. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I have a couple of questions which are, I think, uh, uh, relevant to it, it uh, your presentation. So initially, you told uh, throughout your presentation that uh, there are a lot of flaws and a uh, lot of minuses when it comes to the EV side. And then, uh, with your presentation, you also said that he has tried taking care of those laws and minuses. But overall, is it a good idea to invest in the EV industry overall? So, e is one thing, like you are taking care of the uh, things and all. But uh, overall, as you said, that there are a lot of laws uh, which is uh, related to taxation, related to GST, input, output, manufacturing, spare parts, a lot of things. So, how it is a good idea to invest into the EV industry? Invest in the industry, I would say if you are going to invest in the industry, if you are going to set up the factory, it is, it, all those issues are there. Like taxation, inverted tax structure is there, you have uh, no incentive uh, for the manufacturer, but all those incentives are available for the next level of, uh, next level of business sector, which is uh, dealer and distributor network. Those, like, the manufacturer is selling at 5% to the dealer and the distributor and they are also selling at 5% only. So that aspect is taken care of. All the incentives are being passed by the manufacturer, not by the dealer and the distributor. So the large the business segment, the large the risk is. So if you are going to be into the industry, then all those issues are there. But if you want to set up a dealer or a distributor, outlet then then those issues are not there part of the industry that's fine but uh, what i feel that if manufacturer is passing on a uh, lot of uh, uh, what do you call it a uh, lot of taxation things and a lot of uh, favors to the end consumer or the franchisee and uh, the manufacturer is not himself flourishing and uh, the positives are being passed to the uh, franchisee or the consumer so if a manufacturer is not flourishing, how the industry is going to flourish? Excellent question. So, so I am not saying that the manufacturer is not flourishing. All those incentives are not the issue of money not coming to us. Money comes, to, comes back to us, like the GST refund comes back to us. The incentive amount comes back to us from the government, but it is just a time matter. So it takes about three months time for the GST refund to come. It takes about four months time for the for the incentive uh, to come back to us. So it is more of a cash flow issue, not of a profit issue. Kuch EV industry ke baare mein bhi agar janna chahte hai, I would be happy to cover that. I am not saying please ask about EV only. If you want to know anything about EV industry, I would be really happy to to answer that question. Kitni badi industry hai, kya hai, kya nahi hai, matlab in case anybody has any, any cute. ESY is into two-wheeler EV specifically. We are into three-wheeler as well as two-wheeler. Two-wheeler. So it's uh, this, like any manufacturer to take up, you mentioned 800 for example, are these all into two and three-wheeler or you are also including like four-wheeler EV also? So there are about 500 plus which are in the two-wheeler segment. And there are about 300 plus which are in the three-wheeler segment. 
and these so, are uh, in india or globally no, no, i am talking about india only india only and this okay. count is getting increased day by day because okay. i mentioned that there is no technology advantage there is no design advantage it is simply a matter of importing the the ckt material completely knocked down material assembling it and selling it across so it's like a r- reverse engineering you just pick any bike you get the spare parts uh, and then you can build your own so, kind of a thing so reverse engineering is a technical word i would say it is not even that technical i would say okay but uh, uh, like honestly why is it so easy to build a two wheel i would think a two wheeler is something that you know requires some amount of basic industry know how yeah sure so when we when we uh, when we built our first two wheeler we were very excited today we don't get excited in making a two wheeler because there is no technology see please understand the material comes from outside the country in the ckd format ckd means completely knocked down form so the okay. only activity that happens here is to to attach all those components in the right way and assemble them that's it so it's like assembling an ikea piece of furniture and who manufactures the ckd knocked down form of the the kit basically? so primarily this market is dominated by china Okay. So, ninety-five percent plus import in the EV segment is happening from China only. Okay. And uh, there's no option to do like the CKD. I can understand batteries and so on coming in, but then why is the entire kit, uh, you know, coming in in a knockdown? I I tell you. So you will have to go into the details as to what is the level of volume we are talking about. So there are twenty lakh plus. two wheelers which are being sold in the country i am talking about both electric as well as ice engine uh, vehicle out of that only 2 lakh plus are manufactured in the ev segment now so the 18 lakh vehicle in the ice segment are manufactured by just 4 to 5 player if i have to tell you these are the two wheeler player i i i need to not use my second hand for counting them There is TBS, there is Hero, there is Honda, and then fourth name I will have to think which is the fourth name. Element yeah. is not there, Bajaj is not there. So which is the fourth and the fifth name? So I don't need to use my second hand in order to count the uh, the two wheeler players in the ice segment. Okay. Now where is 800 players? All of us have to have both hands to in order to count that. So five. or maybe less than 5 players share the volume of 18 lakh and 800 plus share the volume of 2 lakh now if somebody want to invest so you take the example of an oem of maruti so maruti doesn't manufacture anything on its own except the engine which comes from japan the rest everything is manufactured by the oems original equipment manufacturer right and the same oem which is manufacturing component for maruti is doing it for honda doing it for honda doing it for kia and all other player understood so they have huge volume to cater now if somebody want to do the similar kind of thing in the electric segment they will like contact eshwa they will contact a b c d e f g h i j k 800 player 800 player and then despite that they will get a volume of just 2 lakh by so nobody is investing on the on the component and the and the material people are feeling it easier to to import the vehicle in ckd form and simply assembling it and selling it okay and usually so what are the margins as a manufacturer in this industry as an so this industry fortunately is giving very good margins i cannot disclose the percentage but i can say that as compared to ice industry this industry is giving at least three times the margin which the ice industry is giving okay so it's definitely double digit margin sir it is it is definitely there okay and uh, for someone who is not into the ev at all would you say to start with like uh, as a manufacturer or a distributor or in the charging station line of so as i mentioned it is not a technology <laughs> as of now so by education i am a chartered accountant cost and work accountant and okay. company secretary if i can run this company i think uh, anybody who is having basic sense basic uh, knowledge can run the company mm-hmm. and can run the business thank you sir thank you sir right. i think it was a very uh, participating session and thanks for the for the participants who asked the question thank you so much